welcome dear students to unlock series to the second part of unit 9 of module 1 in this session we shall look into the exercises given at the end of the passage we tried to locate the meanings of new words and we also tried to find their synonyms and we also tried to understand this uh, antonyms of certain words now let's have a look at the exercises given at the end the first question wonders in the passage means the answers are the options are things that are strange and surprising emotion instilled by something strange things or speculates curiously is filled with admiration we normally wonder how something has happened we wonder what the answer is when we get a question to which we don't know the answer so what is the meaning of the word wonder can you tell me the meaning of the word wonder it is things or speculates curiously so to wonder means to think or to speculate curiously like guess something and what are the synonyms for wonder they are admiration astonishment and surprise the second question dash from the passage is the antonym of certain so we are asked to find out the opposite of the word certain certain means sure so what is the opposite of the word certain or what is the opposite of the word sure it means doubtful so certain its opposite is doubtful and let's have a look at the synonyms for doubtful they are dubious and speculative synonyms for doubtful dubious and speculative the third question the expression take them through the city means the expression take them through the city means take people on a tour so it's like taking people for sightseeing take them through the city means take people on a tour let's have a look at some travel idioms that they are idioms related to travel highways and byways means all roads hit the road means to start the trip a red eye flight is a flight that leaves late at night there are many other idioms related to travel there are many other idioms related to travel i would suggest you that you learn some more of idioms related to travel the fourth question pick the word which means moves with a smooth quiet continuous motion the word which means moves with a smooth quiet continuous motion is glides the word is glides we had already discussed the meaning of the word glides it means to slide or to move in a very smooth and continuous fashion the fifth question majored means the word majored means to get a degree in a subject or graduated so majored means to get a degree in the subject sixth question kindergarten is a word related to i'm very sure you know the answer kindergarten is a word related to education seventh question the term grocery is associated with again we discussed the term grocery also the term grocery is associated with food virtually in the passage means the options given are currently strictly easily almost and virtually means almost ninth question dash is the word used in the passage for stylish and modern dash is the word used in the passage for stylish and modern the answer is swanky and i've also given some synonyms related to swanky they are posh luxurious flamboyant posh luxurious and flamboyant tenth question the noun form of interacting is interaction the noun form of interacting is interaction now we move on to practice exercises find the synonyms of the words in italics the first question 
Our club consists of people from all walks of life and functions on egalitarian principles. The word egalitarian is given in italics. What does the word egalitarian mean? Egalitarian means based on equality. It's based on equality. So it also means democratic, impartial, unbiased. The next question Nishant had a pong song for fine poetry. Nishant had a pong song for fine poetry. Look at the word P E N C H A N T. It is pronounced pong song. Pong song. What does that word mean? Nishant had a pong song for fine poetry. Pong song means liking. So the synonyms of the word pong song are liking, affinity, taste. Now learn the pronunciation of this word pong song. P E N C H A N T is pronounced pong song. So pong song means liking. Next question. The movie was so absorbing that Cat Cathy was oblivious of her surroundings. The movie was so absorbing that Cathy was oblivious of her surroundings. Oblivious means unaware. There are other synonyms for the word oblivious also. They are unconcerned, regardless. So oblivious means unaware, unconcerned, regardless. So in the next question, we are asked to replace the phrase in italics with suitable word or usage. And the fourth question is, an inquiry was ordered to find out and verify the actual case of the accident. An inquiry was ordered to find out and verify the actual cause of the accident. And the phrase given in italics is find out and verify. The usage that can be used instead of the phrase find out and verify is ascertain. So ascertain means to find out and verify. Ascertain means to find out and verify. The next question, the orator is really good at speaking without any preparation and the usage that is given in italics is without any preparation. So what is a word that can be used to replace this usage without any preparation? And the word is impromptu. Did you get the word? Impromptu. Listen carefully. Impromptu. Now, what is the error in the answer given? Can you identify the error in the answer given? The answer given has a spelling mistake in it. What is the correct spelling of the word impromptu? I M P R O M P T U. I M P R O M P T U. So, what is the word? Impromptu. What does that mean? Without any preparation. So, you will be asked to correct the spellings given. You will have to find the errors and correct the spellings. You will have to write the correct spellings. So, be very careful with the mm. spellings. So, without any preparation can be replaced by the usage by the word impromptu. The spelling is I-M-P-R-O-M-P-T-U. Moving on to the next question. The supervisor asked the researcher to shed some light on his new findings. The supervisor asked the researcher to shed some light on his new findings. And the usage given in italics is shed some light. Shed some light. This usage can be replaced by the word elucidate. E-L-U-C-I-D-A-T-E. So what does the word elucidate mean? Shed some light on. The next question. 
asks us to choose the correct word or phrase to complete the sentence. So two op options are given and we will have to find the correct answer to the question. The story is about two families that have an ongoing dash that goes back three generations. The story is about two families that have an ongoing dash that goes back three generations. So we know that the word food will not fit in there. So the answer is feud and feud means quarrel. So the story is about two families that have an ongoing feud that goes back three generations. Next question. I'm just waiting for my father's nod of dash so that I can go abroad to work. I'm just waiting for my father's nod of assent. Assent means permission. The next direction given for us is to use the most correct usage or term to complete the sentences. Please don't forget to attach your latest dash when you apply for the test and interview. And four options are given. All the options are very familiar to us. They are biodata, resume, curriculum vitae and profile. You need to be sure about the meaning of each in order to understand which word fits in where. And here the answer is profile. So please don't forget to attach your latest profile when you apply for the test and interview. Now let's have a look at the meanings of the other words. Biodata means biographical information but it's a very archaic usage or it's a very old usage and it is mostly considered as an Indianism. That is uh, only Indians use the word biodata. So it means biographical information and it's an old fashioned usage. Resume is a French word and resume is ideally a summary of one's education, skills and employment when applying for a new job. A resume does not list out all details of a profile but only some specific skills customized to the target job profile. That means when you are applying for a specific job, you will list out the skills and talents that you have or that you possess and that fits for that particular job you are applying for. So resume need not completely give all the details of a profile of your profile but it will give only specific skills which are suitable for the job that you are applying. A resume would be ideally suited when experience is counted more important than education. So I hope you understood the meaning of the word resume. The next word is curriculum vitae. Curriculum vitae is a more is a more detailed than a resume. Uh, generally 2 to 3 pages or even longer as per the requirement. A curriculum vitae lists out every skill, all the jobs and positions held, degrees, professional affiliations the application applicant has acquired and it is done in a chronological order. So curriculum vitae is comparatively uh, a detailed write-up, the skills that you possess, the positions that you have held, the experience that you have, the degrees and the professional affiliations that you have are all listed out in the curriculum vitae and it is also given in a chronological order. Whereas a profile is a short and brief description of a person. So you need to be very familiar with all these terms especially resume, curriculum vitae and profile. Uh, I hope you have understood the meanings of these three words and this is going to be very important for you because uh, the text itself English for career addresses the employability skills of the uh, learners. So you need to be very careful uh, while you are uh, attaching your curriculum vitae or resume or profile that should depend on the uh, application or the job that you are applying for. I hope you have understood the exercises uh, pertaining to Unit 9 of Module 1 and I hope you have studied the meanings, the synonyms and the antonyms, the phrases and the idioms and the usages given in this unit. So study them well, learn the spellings as well and we shall meet again very soon. Till then, stay safe and take care.